If you'd like to have some fun with photo editing and Lightroom Classic, in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn a simple reflection in a pond into an abstract photo. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor. This is a clip from one of my weekly live streams where I edit subscriber submitted images. In this particular one, we were working on the theme of abstract. If you'd like to learn more about how to watch or submit your images for the live stream, check the description area below. If you're ready to make some abstract photos, let's get started. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is to crop it because initially when I saw this image, the first thing that I thought of was that I want to crop out most of the top of the image and keep just the reflection I'm trying to get it as straight as possible here and keep just the reflection, maybe a tiny bit of this tree down here, just to hint at what actually is the real scene. So I'm going to do something like that. Okay. Then I'm going to flip it upside down so that it really messes with people's minds. Okay. So I'm using the keyboard shortcuts on here, Lightroom. That is command and the square bracket keys. Now we can start to play with the color and the style of the image, make it blurrier and so on. Okay. I want to make sure that we've got some nice color in the water. So I'm going to start by looking at the camera profiles. Okay. I'm guessing that I'm probably not going to use one of the camera ones, but instead let's take a look at some of these others. Okay. So modern has some great colors. I tend to like number seven. I'm not sure why it as darkness. Okay. We can also try some of these the vintage ones, not so much on this, although that's not bad. We could also look at the artistic ones. So these are all built into Lightroom. Okay, so when you first open Lightroom, you'll see all of these under the camera profiles. If you didn't see where I got that from, that's right up here. So in the basic panel, the little squares. Okay. So I am going to go with one of these modern ones, but I think I'm going to go with number one because I really like what it's doing in terms of vibrancy. Or we can look at camera, camera vivid, which is also nice. So if I want to see the comparison, just click on one so it's highlighted. And then just hover over the other. Okay, so this one's giving me a lot more sort of contrast. And I think I'm just going to go with that one. Okay. So now I want to make sure I'm not clipping anything. So I'm going to pull the highlights down. And I want to darken this bottom part. So I'm going to do an edge vignette. Okay, that's solved it, but it's kind of gone a little too far. So I'm just going to <clears throat> double check here. Let's make it a little rounder, like so, and maybe not quite so dark. <clears throat> the other thing I'm going to check is lens corrections. Okay, so I'm going to turn on both chromatic aberration and profile corrections. And what happens, this is um, Olympus file, I believe, I think. Yes. This is an Olympus file. So it's the profile for the lens is automatically applied if you check this off. Okay. So it knows that the lens profile, um, what lens is being used and what camera, but I feel like there's some vignetting going on on the edges here. So I'm just going to turn this off for a moment and check lens corrections here because I want, oops, not distortion. Although that could be interesting for an abstract. Uh, let me just get rid of, see how that is getting rid of the darkness on the edges. Like so. Then I'm going to go back here. And darken a little bit. Still making the corners darker than I would like. So I'll come back to that. Let's darken overall. Still not crazy about that. Okay, and let's go with color priority. Sorry, I'm, I'm coughing a little bit because I've got just a little beginning of a cold. So I'm hoping to keep it off. I am going to do a vignette this way. So I'm going to use a, a mask and do a radial gradient 
And what I want to do is I want to darken everything except sort of this upper area. So I'm going to invert it and then just darken like so. So I want to bring the contrast down a little bit. And this is where we can start playing with lowering the haze, lowering the clarity, making some more blurs, right? So it's that branch at the bottom here, darkening a little bit more. I don't want to lose that bright color though, right? Now I want to see what happens if I choose to add another mask and select the sky. Remember, this is not the actual sky, this is a reflection, but look what happened. Okay, so it did indeed select the sky in the reflection. So I'm gonna darken it even more. Hmm. We can even play around with a sky replacement if we take it to Luminar, right? All right, now we're getting somewhere. So there's sort of the before and after. I'm punching up the color a little bit. Right, we can use the HSL panel to darken the blues, brighten the greens, and then we can actually shift the hues. So if we want to start doing some really funky things, right, we can start making purple sky or funky colors. We can make the trees more orangey blue. Now you have sort of almost like you know, what's called a teal and blue like a lot like you would imagine doing a lot which we can do in lightroom as uh in luminar applying a lot right if you have a lot or a lookup table and you want to apply it in lightroom it's it's where the color profiles are going the camera profiles that's where you would install them okay so i'm not going to actually do that here because i want to show you another way of shifting the colors okay so let's do one more mask i still want to darken this bottom corner so i'm going to just do a linear gradient and darken a little bit over here. I'm literally just adding blue. Okay, can you see that? So I'm just making some color appear where there was not color before. Okay, so we could add some color this way. Maybe let's go a little more greenish with it. Okay, so we could get funky this way and then if i want to add another color i could just add another one or let's let's do a radial one say i want to do a color over here okay again we can just pick a color if i want it more blue or i want it more red okay so see how you can you can make some really really funky things here just going to feather it a bit more and keep it on that area. So now we're starting to get some abstraction happening. Okay, can you see that? So there's multiple different ways that you can use the tools in Lightroom. What have we done so far? Camera profiles, okay, using the masking tools and just applying some color and using the HSL tools, okay. Another major way that you can edit an image and make abstract, especially like this, is the tone curve, okay? Um, I'm going to go back up here and do the basic, and I'm going to lower the texture, right? So now look what happens, see? We've got full blur, right? I'm going to lower the texture. I don't want to go too far with clarity because it ends up sort of making a mush, or I want to go higher with clarity and lower with, with texture. I find that that tends to work really well. And if you lower dehaze, it lightens the whole thing and you lose sort of that punchy color. So you have to make sure to add some black back in. We can do the shift double click if I want black and white, but there's no rules here. Remember when you're doing abstract, there's absolutely no rules whatsoever. So anything goes really okay so now we've sort of blurred it out a bit more okay so there's before and after and if i want to keep this part sharp i could just mask off um mask it off a little bit i could just say okay i'm gonna do a linear gradient just down in the corner here and remember anything you do in this presence panel if i've done it globally as minus and then i do it as a local adjustment, 
plus, it's basically going to cancel it out what I did on the other one, okay? So if I put a little bit of texture back, right, it will keep that tree in the corner looking like a tree. Just, I like that sort of hint of reality there to just mess with people, right? Okay, so now let's go to the tone curve, right? Might do some more pink up in here. I see some, might, I feel like some color might work up in here too. So the flipped version is interesting on its own, yes. And that was what I saw immediately when I saw this image. Uh, originally, I was like, okay, I'm gonna flip this and make make an abstract with it, okay? Funky colors, right? Awesome, okay. Now, with the tone curve, when you do any adjustments on the curve, usually it just applies to the overall image. It doesn't shift the colors, okay? Uh, I'm just going to undo that. When you start going into these color curves, now you can see there's red and cyan. So these are opposite colors on the color wheel. So red and cyan. If I push the curve this way, we get red. If I push it this way, we get cyan. So it's kind of a teal blue. But if I shift things around, I can make the highlights teal blue and the shadows red or vice versa, teal shadows, red highlights, okay? Now keep in mind, the steeper you make this S-curve, the more contrast you're gonna get as well, okay? So if I don't want as much contrast, I'll just keep it a little closer to center, okay? And you can do this with any of them, or you can just bring the center point in, okay? So if I want green highlights or pink highlights, Right? Now we've kind of got crazy. So remember I said I wanted some pink over there? We could definitely add some pink. Like that. Like that. And then green shadows. Or we don't want green shadows. We want yellow shadows. So let's go this way. Or we want blue shadows. Oops. We gotta grab right on this corner one here. There we go. So now we want blue shadows. Keep the highlights neutral or yellow. So you can really get crazy with your colors this way, okay? Now, what if this is not blurred enough, right? If I'm using the uh, basic panel, I've got texture almost all the way down. I can bring the clarity down, but of course, then we lose that contrast, right? What happens if I apply another linear mask and I'm going to come over top of this little tree in the corner again. And then I'm going to invert it. So basically, it's everything except the tree in the corner. And now I can go even further with the texture. Okay. I can increase the contrast. And guess what we have now? Now there's curves. So what we didn't have before as part of the adjustments that you could do locally, now we have curves, okay? So you can do just a regular curve to add more contrast, or let's say I want some yellow in the highlights. Yeah, I'm still not happy with that. I like the pink and the green myself. We're kind of making some apocalyptic sort of stuff here. See, so it's not affecting this area. And it allows me to go further with the texture. So if I want to keep blurring, I could just do minus 100, minus 100, and apply it multiple times, just simply by duplicating this mask, right? So if I duplicate this mask, it duplicates the blur and all the effects that have been applied to it, right? So now we're getting something really wacky, right? Now, if we decide, okay, that's great, but now it's gone too far and I don't want this little thing in the corner, we could either include it in the masks or just crop it out at the end of the day. Okay, I kind of want less of this white sky. So now we've got something completely abstract, okay? So can you see the steps that I used to create that? We can use the basic panel to lower the texture and blur it. We can use the color, um, the camera profiles here. We can use a tone curve and we can use the HSL. 
and I haven't even touched color grading. Okay, so that's another tool that you can use in Lightroom to affect the colors, right? We talked about this in another video. If you could share Lightroom um, color grading video, please, Rob. So I can take this one and say, well, I would like my midtones to be more orange. Okay, so I can take my midtones, more orange. And I want my shadows more blue. I'm not happy with the green. Okay, like so. So there's multiple tools right inside of Lightroom. You don't have to go to Photoshop, and we've done a pretty good job of abstracting this, right? Now, if you want to make another version of this, that's the benefit of Lightroom, is we can just make a virtual copy. So right click and create a virtual copy. And then we can do something completely different, right? So we can reset it or start with something different. Maybe this time, I might want to do black and white, actually. Okay, so if I want black and white, let's just do that. Now, keep in mind, all of the stuff that I applied that had color in it in the masks, even though the image is black and white, the color is still there. Okay, so if you don't want those, you have to remove all these ones with the masks. So I could just delete all the masks. Where are we? There we go. We're going to delete all the masks. And you'll notice that there is still some color, and that's from the color grading. Okay, so if you want to get rid of that, you have to reset that as well. Now we're back to black and white, and we still got some color in the tone curve. So see how many places we actually applied color. Now it's back to black and white. Okay, so now you could go a completely different direction. And remember, when you're applying the local adjustments, you can add color with any of them. So if I want to just do a radial gradient and just have, actually, let's just do the sky. Let's just say like the sky. And let's just say I want some blue sky. Oops, let's make it a little bluer so you can see it. And then just darken it. Right, so now we've got blue sky. Let's select the opposite. <clears throat> now we've got the trees. Now I'm just going to select something green. So now we literally have a duo tone with blue and green, but none of the original color. Okay. Interesting, right? I'd love to hear from you already. How many? How many of you have gotten some ideas of how you can use these tools in Lightroom? So we're going to do the next one in Luminar. Have you gotten some ideas based on which tool did I show you that you've never used before or never thought about using in this way? Okay. Tell me in the chat. And if you're watching this video later, tell me in the comment area below. What tools in Lightroom can you use to abstract your image that you haven't tried before? Check out my complete Lightroom course for everything you need to know about Lightroom Classic. There's a link below for you in the description area. If you enjoy my teaching style and you want to learn Lightroom Classic from start to finish, then it might just be the course for you. If you'd like to watch another video here on YouTube, check out one on the screen now.